well. This year marks, was marked the fourth anniversary of slavery. Mm -hmm. But now, about six months have passed. Mm -hmm. We have found that we have got people who come from all over the world, all through the United States, that want to know how do we survive mm -hmm. after all these years. I've been going out to the in this election. I've been to about six churches. He went to the project in our election. Tomorrow, I'll be going to Deep Den with <laughs> to election. That's my last one. I'm running out of gas. <laughs> but what I'm saying, they want to know how <coughs> did we survive in this area for 385 years? See, because 15 years after the first slave landed at Jamestown and Pun Comfort and all that kind of stuff, King Charles awarded this land here to a man named Tunson, and they called it Tunson name. And some way we've been coming in and out the slaves, and I am a direct descendant. They believe the slave of Angolia. They believe that we're here. See, because what had happened the European tried to design what they called a perfect Negro. And my folks is called what you call a perfect Negro. What is the perfect Negro? Now, if you think of the perfect Negro, you have to look at our freedom papers. What was freedom to us and what was the perfect Negro? The perfect Negro is judged by the fabric of his hair, his skin color, his height, his auditory skills. That's how they call the perfect Negro. And our folks here in Petersburg were selective breeding. Very selective breeding. Most of us in Pocahontas was crossed with European, French, and so forth and so on. But even though we have freedom papers, if we ever violated the trust they had in us, they could throw us back into slavery. See, because Dred Scott went to the Supreme Court, he made that known. That there's no such thing as no free Negro in America. See, Dred Scott was in Southampton, Virginia. And a military man had carried him to Illinois as a free state. He thought he was free after the, the slave master died. But the Stanford family in, in North Carolina challenged it and carried him to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court ruling was, if you're a slave in Virginia, you'll be a slave in Illinois because there was no federal law. And Drake Scott lost. And one year later, he died because his home really was in South Hampton, Virginia. A free Negro. And that's who we were over here. But what we was caught up in over here was spirituality. <coughs> My folks practiced Christianity and Buddhism, the spirits of yesterday. That's what we looked into, the spirits of yesterday. See, on a cloudy day, uh, a moonless night, you heard voices from the past look like it's speaking to you. Like voices from the past. I myself was selected by the township of Pocahontas when I was a child. One day, I'll leave this place to the promised land. And what the promised land was, they put in trust in me that I would one day tried to develop Pocahontas. What you see now is not the original Pocahontas. God saved Pocahontas in 1993 on August 6th when he sent a tornado through here and nearly destroyed this place. But it looked like if you follow the path of the tornado, it looked like it's selected. It, it destroyed things that we didn't need and went on to the Appomattox River and went across the river and 
four people got killed. That's how we feel that we were blessed living here on Pocahontas Island. Because we here in Pocahontas, there's so many black communities throughout the South, North, and Southern, we were suffering with post-traumatic stress of slavery. You familiar with that? Post-traumatic stress of slavery is the aftermath of trauma, of something that happened to you. You can't get over it. Trauma. Aftermath. That you just, that, that, that I'm a soldier right now. I'm being on that. That's, that represents who I am. Things that I've been involved in in the military, I will never forget. I will never get over it. I don't care how many checks you send me or whatever you do. I got certain stress that I'll never get over. And slavery was a stress that we as black folks, we haven't gotten over. Now, let us look at slavery. There were three basic elements after slavery that we went into. post traumatic stress. He sent the Native America on the reservation. He sent the poor black man and could escape into the project. And he sent the poor white man to trailer coat. To where? Trailer coat. Most of the violence we have right now and killing in our community, where they at? Projects, trailer coat, and your reservation. Post traumatic stress of faith. If the disparity between income and education would make you post traumatic stress. And coming out of slavery, we never got it. Illiteracy, poverty, after the Emancipation Proclamation and 1865, General Order Number 3 said what? Stay with your slave master and work for wages. Don't go nowhere. Don't come out on the street. Don't go out the military base. And idle time is what? Devil's time. And what happened? That's what loaded the jails. And then when they, they still needed people to work on these plantations and things, they put them in there and put them on a work camp. Right now, in this idle time, our youth on the corners, they are loading these jails. You know what they say? How old are you? Six. What grade are you in? Six. You're in the first grade. Keep on going. Because they said they can judge by the time the third grade. Third grade. If you drop out and you have a problem, you're headed for jail. Yep. You get what I'm saying? You're not trainable. Let me say something I, 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 happened to me. Probably happened to me. Have you ever got a spanking in your hand in school? Mm -mm. Why did they stop that? When did they stop that? <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? When I was in school, they would hit me in my hand if I, <coughs> if I, if I did something wrong. Yeah. If you hit a child in the hand right now, you going to jail. That was part of slavery, and we didn't even know it. We were being disciplined in school for the slave master. Hit you in your hand. That's a form of discipline. That's right. No time to talk to you. Pain, stress, post-traumatic stress. This is what I'm saying. And I know y'all tired of my mouth, I know it. But this museum I got, Representative of everything has to do with slavery in the yard. See, we got to remember that. Paul Connor had white and blacks living together in this area. A lot of the, the slave masters lived open with black women. And we had black and whites living together here during slavery. But they brainwashed us. 
they made us think the lighter one was better than the darker one. See, none of y'all didn't old as me, I don't think. I hope not. When I was in school, I never saw a brown skinned a black skinned major. I never see one. When we was walking down Sycamore Street, we saying, we shall overcome. I believe in it. And I challenge the validity of it. We shall overcome, come and overcome what? When we go down here to boycott the White Man Institute, we go down here to boycott it. We can't eat at the lunch stand. And we're sad because of race. But I turn right around and go back to the school I come from. I didn't see a dog skinned, a brown skinned major. I want to love my sister. I want somebody to look like me. I can remember when I first church I went to. And I looked up there, it looked like in Petersburg, most of your preachers just looked like they was light skinned. Where's the brown skinned preacher? Nat Turner, where's the brown skinned preacher? And I left one church and went to another church because other man look like me. If you're going to talk to me about God, maybe you know my God, you know my feeling. That was part of post-traumatic stress of sleep. What do you think? Huh? Baby, bring me some water. I'll stop talking right now. <laughs> <coughs> what do y'all think? Y'all got any questions? So the whites that lived here, were they... Um Endangered individuals also, were they free, were they, you know, the original origins of the... See, if you look at the earlier Pocahontas, the Henshaws and some of those Quakers, mm -hmm. we had Quakers living here, mm -hmm. among us, Henshaws and so forth. And a lot of them was poor whites that lived among us, but they had the same job. We have, but we had wealthy whites living here too. They serve as servants to them, just like we did. Mm -hmm. See, because even mm -hmm. though you may give a man land and horses and things, everybody's not productive. Mm -hmm. yes. So therefore, they came here and lived among us and worked on the shoreline with my folks. Right. With my folks. Yeah, any other question? I have a question. What about you, honey? <laughs> My little boy, what, you, what about you? Uh, how did slaves get free? Mm. How did slaves get free? Wow. How old are you? Six. And she's <laughs> six. Where you get all this brain from? What, what's your name? <laughs> you are not. Huh? You forgot. Oh, you have been here before. Yeah, yeah. What can you believe in? You forgot me. What is it? He's been here before. He said you forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Daybrun. Huh? Daybrun. Daybrun. Day 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 wow. He's back again. <laughs> <laughs> now ask the question again one more time. He said, how did slaves get free? Okay. <clears throat> Let us look at what slaves ever free. In eight, I'm going to bring us uh, one of the early things they say. The early Emancipation Proclamation is supposed to have been what year? Let me help you. 1863. 1863. What did that, who did that free? Let me help you. It only freed slaves in the southern state. You were still a slave in the north. You get it? <coughs> yeah. So, but according to what they say about Lincoln, Lincoln, they say if they would consider not spreading slavery into the West and so forth and stop it, and Lincoln say he might let you keep your slave. You get it? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that you said when slavery ended, 1863 was when the first Emancipation Proclamation, but in 1865 was supposed to have been when Colonel Granier walked, he rode into Texas and said, you free in 1865 after the war was over. You ever heard of Juneteenth? 
That went, but that was a lie. There's evidence of slavery into America up until 1925 and young because some of those rural areas, it never got there. That's what affects America right now. Mm -hmm. Sharecropping mm -hmm. was a form of slavery. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of General Order Number 3? What General Order Number 3 of the Emancipation Proclamation said? Stay with your slave master. Work for wages. Don't come out here. No, be around military bases and no idle time. <clears throat> There'll be a road to the penal system. Mm -hmm. Chain gang. Now, how a lot of them got free, a lot of them escaped. Some of them they said was given their free. Now, my folks, a lot of them was free and was able to go to New York, go to different places. Another thing, a lot of my folks that worked on the Appomattox River, the Jareds, Stewarts, even Joseph Jenkins Robbins that came in here from first president of Liberia, they had a certain amount of freedom to go and come. But you know who most of them were? A lot of them. And they were considered free. Many of them, my folk were sent to schools and things, color of their skin. So this Harry Tudman part, do you ever heard of Harry Tudman? Mm -hmm. No, you haven't. Where's she born at? Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know. He <laughs> don't tell you, though. What was her real name? Uh, what was her slave name? Mendy. What was her last slave name? What, what was her last slave name? Uh, what was her last slave name? R-O-O-S. Ross. Oh. Yeah, that was her slave name. She was in Maryland. Slavery in Maryland was different from slavery in Virginia and South Carolina and so forth. She says she ex emancipated a lot of slaves through the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. What was the route of the Underground Railroad? Yeah, you said what? What was the route of the Underground Railroad? From Florida on up? From Louisiana on up? What's, what was the route? Mm -hmm. The rivers and the swamps. Show me a river, show me a swamp, and I'll show you a plantation. You get what I'm saying? No, I actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your slaves escaped through the Meadowland. Everglades, dismal swamps. And you find most of your, um, what you call it, um, the poorest people is that right near the river and everything, so that's why they said uh, to use the um, rivers and everything. The rivers. Now, you know why they were so successful? <coughs> if you're in the Belgian Congo, mm -hmm. if you can survive in the Belgian Congo, mm -hmm. you can survive in our waterways. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Our spirituality now. Where do most rivers flow? Well, because they're actually, they don't like. They don't have ways to move. They do have ways to move, but they just don't. Like, if you have a boat, and then you put it in the water, and then look. And they just it's say, get in a boat like that. Know what they was following? The rising sun. Mm -hmm. See, something about black man religion, that one day something going to rise in the east, and I'll fly away. Mm -hmm. See, the way, the, the, uh, if you go into a cemetery right now, which way does a headstone face? The uh, rising sun. Is that right? No, yeah. The rising sun. That when they bury you, one day you're going to rise up when the Messiah comes. You get what I'm saying? It faced, so therefore, when the slaves came out of the south and headed north, the rising sun, which way do we come in from Africa? From the east. You get it? They was headed back home. Mississippi River, which way is headed? Head north. The rising sun come in. So what I'm saying is that a lot of the slaves freed themselves by runaway slaves and things. But you know one thing? One thing they don't give enough evidence of the Quakers and things to help us because of because you run some place, you just want no 7 Eleven at them time. <laughs> well, no, you know, Mac, you know, 
some good white folks had to help you all the way to Canada. Why do the similar they said underground? What is an underground railroad? What is the symbol of underground? Why did it get the, where did it get that name, underground railroad? I don't know. Huh? I say this again, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. There was a cartoonist that depicted a slave sitting on the back of a flatbed train going beneath the Canadian border into Canada. Underground river into Canada. So you're saying that they went to the underground world and then they got to Canada. Yeah, Canada was a matter of fact. <laughs> you ever heard of Nova Scotia? Scotia? Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that's in Canada? Mm -hmm. That is infested with black folk. Mm -hmm. How did they get there? You ain't saying infested with black folk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's a black folk, right? We settled, but... <laughs> Why did they get that? They, they were resettled. No, 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 no. Those blacks that served the British, and they promised them freedom. And guess what? When the Revolution War was over, they didn't take them to England, they carried them up there in Canada. We watched the, uh, have you ever seen the documentary, The the Book of Negroes? No, because I'm a color man. I don't want to look at the Book of Negroes. But, what, but anyway, it, it, talks, <laughs> it talks about it. It talks about that. Uh, how, how after the war, um, you know, they, it's such a true one that they, they were documented. People got to change their name and whatever and how the British resettled yeah. them in Nova Scotia. It was very interesting. Yeah, Nova Scotia. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. See, mm -hmm. we had a man here that went to the promised land. But we never gave him credit. Liberia. Mm -hmm. Joseph Dinger Roberts. Mm -hmm. See, Joseph Dinger Roberts left here in 1829. You know why? There were so many blacks being emancipated in this area, they said we got to get rid of some of them. And that's when the Colonization Act and so forth around 1822, they set us out some land outside Sierra Leone and they called it Liberia, and the capital of Liberia is what? Um, Morovia. What that name after? It's named after James Monroe. President Monroe. 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 You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that we have always seeked the promised land, and we have had some, matter of fact, <laughs> Gabriel Prosser. You ever heard of Gabriel Prosser? No, you yeah. haven't. Who is Gabriel Price? I've heard of him. Did he lead a revolt? revolt? Yeah. Gabriel's revolt? When? That's, you're right. <laughs> when? When? Oh, when? What's the history? Where Google? Google, when? 1800. <laughs> okay, 1800. Mm -hmm. See, old uh, Gabriel Price, black men, mm -hmm. Ned Turner, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Malcolm X. If you are a black man and have been inspired by God to lead these folks to the promised land, they're going to kill you before you reach for that. Do we have any modern day names? That modern day right now that up to be assassinated? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No, not to be assassinated, but leaders. Who are we, our modern day leaders? We got some people out here. Okay. But they haven't surfaced yet. Okay. Now, the man that I thought was the man was was Eli Muhammad. Muhammad what do you call it? Muhammad? Elijah. 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 I thought he was the man because the stuff he just said just really, you know, mm -hmm. toned me, made me think, you know, about things. Since. So you don't like Farrakhan? Farrakhan, he's fairly decent. Okay. But. I'm going to say this, I think, I've been seeing Mr. Farrakhan ever since I was a child. I've seen guys sell bean piles, papers on the corners, it's good, but when are we going to own my own business? That's what he may have me impressed about, that we need to own my own business. But I saw, look like we as black folks never united together to own my own business, to own our own soil, 
plant our own crop. I never saw that, but he's a good man, but I don't have nothing against him, but I don't see anybody rising right now. Uh, I look at Richmond, and uh, I, I see Wat Watson, some, I see him on TV sometime, and I try to look, I don't see. See, why is such an effect? In Petersburg, there's a church on every corner. The church is in between, but there's crime among us. If you can't keep the devil out of the church, how you can keep him off the corner? <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying now? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. See, we, we, we as black folk need to clean up our own neighborhood. And we got the power. Power. Unity. If we come together, we can do anything we want to do. But that disparity between income and education, post-traumatic stress of slavery, still divides us. That's income. That's what I'm saying. And that's my belief. See this, see this museum right here? This is my dream. I always wanted to have a black history museum because my folks entrusted in me that one day I'll tell a story. In 2003, when I retired from the federal government after 38 years, I worked on a plantation called Bellwood. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Thirty-eight years I worked on a plantation called Bellwood. Don't say that. I'm twenty-two in the mind. Huh? <laughs> but let me. I can bring you all up to date. What did General Order Number Three say? It said something about just don't be idle. You know, told Stay away that. from. <laughs> <laughs> Idle time, stay away from the military base, right? right? Stay away from the military base, yes. This is what I have to stop. Maybe I'm wrong. Man. <laughs> if most people are not a civil servants mm. in America from Washington, D.C. on down, Fort Lee, Fort Gordon, Fort Jackson, Fort Leavenworth, Fort Stewart, Fort Dix, uh, what call it in uh, what in Maryland? What's the name of that uh, on this base? Uh, awesome. We get most of our jobs is with the military. Mm -hmm. It's with civil service. Mm -hmm. There was no job provided for us, mm -hmm. so most people who retire from military get a decent wage. Mm -hmm. See, but I don't told them on that plantation that I used to work on. Don't leave that plantation if you ain't got a plan. Because Walmart don't pay the money that that plantation paid me for 38 years. Stay with them. But be like my main name, W.E. Du Bois. You ever heard of him? Yes, sir. What did he say? Which one? Which the talent 10%. Oh, talent 10%. We as black folks, we don't reach back and pull another 10% up with us once we get there. I can't blame you, you know why? It's such a struggle after 38 years of plantation, you tired. You just you just got enough uh, strength for you to make it. I'm, not, I'm just telling you that we work with our families and so forth. We ain't got much to throw back. Now, honey, don't don't be mad with me. It's what might happen to Pocahontas. Our holy land, our sacred land over here, gonna be entrusted in our daughters and grandkids. But most of them gonna have the jobs and things now to maintain this promise land over here. You get what I'm saying? Some of the most expensive properties, waterfront property, we got it over here. It's gonna be taxed. And some of them in this area do not have the jobs to maintain the promise. Now, in the inner city, Petersburg and other places, they need green space. Mm -hmm. And the green space is over here. Mm -hmm. The promise man in gentrification. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Ain't nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. My tax now, wow. 
I pay off more in tax for the average person to make their money. You know, if you add it up per month. And they're getting higher and higher and higher.